Chrome, Safari. Which one works better? With dial-up. Let's find out here on the Dial-Up Chronicles. The Dial-Up Chronicles. guys, today we're going to be using Chrome and Safari with dial-up internet and we're just going to compare and see how they both work with a couple websites today and see what happens. So about three weeks ago I got Juno free dial-up internet and I just got that on my iPad and then I already had Juno software installed on my HP laptop and we've been just experimenting with that and seeing how that works today in 2022. And so today we're just going to focus on Chrome and Safari uh, web servers, web engines, whatever, and see how they work. So yeah, Juno, uh, today you can still get Juno for free and you get 10 hours. They say you get 10 hours a month. There's also an accelerated, but you really don't necessarily need that. And we've been making some videos and just checking them out, checking out the dial up today in 2022, seeing how it works. So I've just been having some fun with that with you guys. So I, I found this article about Safari coming out. So Safari came out in 2003. Macworld Expo, San Francisco, Apple Today, unveiled Safari, the fastest and easiest to use web browser ever created for the Mac. Safari's highly tuned rendering engine loads pages over three times faster than Microsoft's Internet Explorer for the Mac and runs JavaScript over twice as fast. Safari's innovative features include Google's search capabilities integrated directly into the toolbar. Snapback, a new way to instantly snap back up to search results, are the top level of any website. So anyway, apparently uh, Safari came out in 2002, I want to say. So dial-up was definitely still being used then. Of course, it was on the decline and broadband was on the up decline. And I believe Chrome came out around mm, 2008, I want to say. So we're going to take a look into both engines, servers. So here we go. It's free Juno internet that anybody can get if you want it. And I know all of you are craving to get dial up again. So go get it and then get a home phone. And that'll be another video I talk about why it's great to have a home phone. Let's listen in on my home phone while it dials in. Isn't that a beautiful sound? That's the sound of excitement. All right, it looks like we're just about connected. Your member ID and password are being verified. That's amazing. Okay, logging on to Juno. Here we are. So again, there is an accelerated dial-up and it does work better, but we don't have that. We just have the free dial up right now with our home telephone. And then this pops up. You see we have these advertisements for Net Zero and Juno Turbo. And Juno and Net Zero are basically the same thing. So I'm just gonna put bring this down and check here we have Juno internet dial up 
All right. So let's try Google Chrome. And this could take a long time, but maybe not. Okay. All right, Google Chrome is up and it's trying to load something. I think. Oh, look. What? That was actually pretty fast. Here it is. Oh, I think this is like just a general. Okay. Well, let's search for something. Um. A search for happiness. We all need happiness. Can I spell that right? Okay. You can see here in the top left that thing is moving. Okay, so something is happening. This is amazing. See, I get we get a nice um little thing up here Juno options inbox right web so I guess this gives you direct access to your email so yeah you get a free email address when you sign up for Juno so I encourage all of you to go out there and get your own Juno account okay I think something's happening Yes, happiness, a noun, the state of being happy. She struggled to find happiness in her life. Cinnamon, synonyms, contentment, pleasure, contentedness, satisfaction. Scroll down here. People also ask, what is the true meaning of happiness? What are the four types of happiness? Okay, come back to that. But let's just continue to scroll down. And happiness, psychology today. What is happiness? Very well mined. Look, we get some images. This is working pretty decently. Much, much better than I thought. And this is for free. The only thing that's not free is my home phone. So I have to have a home phone to make this work in the original way. Now you can... Of course, you can imitate this. You can use your Ethernet and you can trick your computer. Um, and there's tons of videos on that. You can trick your computer into thinking it's using dial-up when it's actually using your broadband internet and, and use a form of dial-up internet. But we're doing it the OG way or the old school way. We're actually doing it through the, the, the telephone wire itself, which I think is really neat. So we've got some images here. The term happiness is used in the context of mental or emotional states, including positive or pleasant emotions, ranging from contentment to intense joy. See results about happiness. Oh, there's a film called Happiness. This dark ensemble comedy is centered on the three Jordan sisters. Oh, that's cool. There's Wikipedia definition of happiness, happiness definition. Okay, and we're getting images, we're getting top stories. So let's click on something and see what happens. World Happiness Report reveals more sadness and more. Now this is where we might run into some problems. I'm trying to pull up a modern website using dial-up, but let's see. I'm really pleasantly surprised on how well it's working so far. Greatergood.berkeley.edu. Okay. Sometimes uh, .edu websites have like older, still use the older type stuff that was used during the dial-up era. So we might get lucky. And this might pull up for us. You can see the blue circle spinning. So that means something is happening. 
So a couple of weeks ago we had turbo down here in the bottom right corner. If you see a couple videos ago, first time I signed up I had turbo. But since then it's just been regular Juno internet. So that could have some kind of effect as well. And I guess they gave that to me for free the first time, but because it's the free Juno internet, I'm not getting the turbo anymore. So one day when I'm got tons of money, I'm going to subscribe to the turbo so I can really have a great time. Okay, guys, we're back. It did come up. It didn't take very long, so sorry that you missed all that loading time. It was just a few minutes and it's still apparently loading but it came up greater good science center magazine in action in education oh we can donate <laughs> we should try to do that topics education mind and body parenting and family relationships quizzes purpose in life happiness at work so again i think this is because it's an, uh, an education website like a like a college website, they seem to be, I don't know, they seem to work better for some reason. Videos, Greater Good Books, Dear Greater Good, Bridging Differences, Podcasts. Oh, that would be interesting if the podcast worked. Ah, Compassion, Keys to Well-Being. Let's scroll down. It looks like it's done because this thing isn't spinning anymore. World Happiness Report Reveals More Sadness and more kindness during COVID-19. Global survey of subjective well-being looks at how our mental health and behaviors have changed during the pandemic. When bad things happen, wars, pandemics, shootings, the optimists of the world tend to turn their attention to all the goodness that still exists. The heroic fighters, the frontline workers. Oh my goodness. Okay. This is interesting. Look, this came up. It's a nice little graph here. So this dial-up is working pretty decently. Figure 2.1, ranking of happiness. Looks like Finland is number one. Denmark, number two. Iceland, three. Israel is number nine. So these are one of the countries you should move to soon. Switzerland, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Sweden, Norway, New Zealand. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, the Gallup poll, I guess this is from the Gallup poll. Keep scrolling down a little bit. Okay, so all this came up. This seems to be working better than Internet Explorer. Huh. Oh, about our cookies, except. About the Arthur, Kira M. Newman. Let's, let's click on podcast. Let's see if that, that's a good sign. Whoop! Yes! We are, have a blank white page. There it goes. Oh, wow. Oh, man. All right, guys. This is on Juno Internet Access. Can you believe it? Are you believing what you're seeing? Science of happiness. Oh. Play the trailer. Oh, no data received. Okay, we're going to try Safari now. I'm interested to see if this works. That would be neat. So this is just like an old HP laptop, probably from the early 2000s, I guess. I really have no idea. I haven't looked deeply into the model or anything. I'll have to look into that at some point. Okay, apple.com slash start page. You see the little uh, thing. Okay, here we go. Something's happening. Oh, this is neat. This is really exciting. And look, we have all these little things we can just click on. Oh, man, that'd be... <laughs> play a YouTube video on dial-up. That would be amazing. I guess technically you could play a video with YouTube on dial-up. You would have to download the video and then wait 
however many hours it took to download the video and then you could play it. So I guess that would actually work. We're not gonna do that. Okay, it looks like the page is, if this coloring in is any indication, we're getting close, we're getting close to um, something happening. This is a good sign. This is really good. Maybe we will stop using Internet Explorer. We we'll use Google or Safari. Next week, we're going to have to try Firefox to see how that works. All right. I think this is neat here that this is constantly uh, playing. We get several ads here. Net Zero, make money, click here. Get $30 for every friend you refer to Net Zero. So that's kind of cool. And then eventually it'll go to something else. And then if you actually click on these, it will take you to real links. As I demonstrated um, in my last video. So check that out. Like and subscribe. And here, so here, this other thing has come up, Net Zero Member Special, Security Plus Performance and Backup. All right, guys. Um, I will get back with you in just a moment. Hey, guys, we're back. And I just stopped the video and I just turned it back on because it looks like something is coming up can see this thing spinning here that's cool you could stop loading this page so we've gotten this black bar so far so this is really amazing this is the power of dial-up this black bar here oh there we go more things are coming the Apple logo and it says store and Mac we're really getting somewhere. And I can scroll right and left here at the bottom. Or I can get more white and less black. This is cute, this little eyeglass thing. Show reading list. Oh, okay. All right. By now, if you've been waiting with me this long to load this page, you could have definitely made a sandwich by now. And you could have started eating it. It's probably a good way to watch this video, honestly. Make a sandwich and just turn this on. Okay, we are loading. And guys, I will get right back to you. All right, guys, we waited about eight, nine minutes or so. And as you can see, still got the same thing here. It says store, Mac, Apple. This thing is spinning. My fan is chugging along. Nothing is happening. I would, oh, look, we've got these two blue arrows. So let's go to yb.me, hit enter. And let's see if this, if this works uh oh we had a sound from the computer okay whoa that came up quick oh that was awesome okay let's hit surprise me you asked for it boom oh okay see now that's the speed I got the first time we used Juno internet on my HP like three weeks or so ago just popped right up just like that and again it's because um, the search engine yb.me brings you to websites that are tailored to work with older computers and and slower speeds so you can see all this great stuff came up all these pictures of mushrooms Tom Volk's fun guy you got this license plate that says mushrooms Welcome to my fungus webpage. 
I hope you enjoy learning something about lots of different kinds of mushrooms and other fungi. August 9th, 2010. It's been over four years since my heart transplant. Oh, goodness. Okay, that's serious. Wow. All right, I'm not going to go into that. But you may want to check this out. Let's scroll down. Fungus of the month? You have all these little thumbnails to hit on. Research projects, holiday fungi, special topics. I guess this is a picture of the guy that... This is Tom Volk. Cool. Updated August 9th, 2010. Welcome to Tom Volk's Fungi. My webpage went online November 25th, 1995. Okay. So you can see it went on in 1995. And he's probably using the same kind of style that he was back then. And that's why the... The website is working so well with dial-up. Although I had several hundred images on a Gopher server starting July 1994. First month I had 158 hits. Mostly from my reloading the page to see if it was still online. By contrast, last month there were more than 17,000 hits on this page. In the past 14 years I've had more than 990,000 hits on this main page. Oh, that's cool. Oh, look, the, the pictures change here. Pictures of this guy. Oh, here he is with the big mushroom. That's neat. <laughs> oh, man. That, now, this is something I could do all day. Just checking out different web pages that still work well with dial-up. Let's click on one of the... Um, let's click on one of the thumbnails here. Let's click on Fungus of the Month. And boom, look, look how fast that came up. That's really neat. Tom Folk's Fungus of the Month pages. August 2010, Laceria bicolor, a mutualistic fungus and pioneer in genome sequencing with co-author Todd Odsmanson. Let's click on August 2010. And we get a picture and some text about Laceria bicolor, the fungus of the month. Oh, neat. This month's fungus is whatever. And, oh, whoa, something else happened. We got a black background, and we lost the text, though. Okay, this, our, our Safari spinner. So Safari is working with dial-up just fine for the most part. We got some pictures coming up. Okay, so we're having some issues with this, but it is coming up. Pictures in the text. Scroll down. A lot of text. A lot of pictures. Okay, well that's neat. Let's let's go back to Wibby.me and let's do one more surprise me. Okay, there it goes. Okay, that wasn't too bad. It took a little bit longer than the last last time we, we typed it in. Let's hit surprise me. You asked for it. Obsoletecomputermuseum.org. Oh, this looks like a fun site we're going to have to check out again. There's another website I want to check out in another video at some point that we checked out last week called toastytech.org I want to say welcome to obsolete computer museum we get a little side thing over here it's nice text and picture uh, obsolete computer museum oh this looks latest news running since 1995 again just like the last website started in 1995 so it's still kind of built with that same foundation that's why it came up so quickly with our dial-up out with the obsolete in comes new check out all the new computers and gadgets to go with them reviewed our savantmag.com okay lots of uh things to links to click on pi day celebrations tom copper exhibit obsolete computer museum frequently asked questions obsolete computer helpline Oh, go here for answers to your questions about old computers. Let's click on that. 
It was forbidden. You don't have permission to access. What? Whoa, okay. Let's go back. Scroll down. Exhibits, Acorn, Electron. Oh, look, Apple II, Apple II Plus, Apple IIc. Oh, this is kind of like ToseyTech.com talking about computers. Atari 400. Oh, we could look at this all day. Let's let's type Apple II. Let's click on Apple II. So we'll have to come to this website again too. This looks pretty neat. Apple II. Okay, and we got a we got a picture coming up. And that's pretty that's pretty good speed. Not bad for dial-up. Picture's still loading, but it's a fairly large image. Cool. Just about loaded. You can see the Apple II logo on the picture. Still waiting for the keyboard part to come up. Great. So that didn't that didn't take too long at all. And we scroll down. Here it is, the original Apple II. Darling of schools everywhere. If you're anywhere near my age, late 30s, then you then you used one of these. Okay. Shot with the top off. Backside. Okay, so there's different pictures. Most recent comments, no comments. Okay, so it's basically just a picture. Let's go back to the museum. But that's cool. Are several pictures. Let's see how quick it takes to get back to the, the main page. And look, there's a little picture of this dude up here in the search engine. Okay, this is pretty neat. What is this? Consider taking high school diploma online courses or Excel high school. What is... The websites... These older websites are just, they're, I don't know, they're fun, they're goofy, they're just, they were just whatever they wanted to be. Safari can't open the page. Okay. Cool. So we'll have to come back to this. Um, I will click on one more. Let's click on the Lisa. Let's see, I guess we're just, we're going to get another image. Apple Lisa text already came up inspired by Xerox's new idea and there's the picture that that didn't take long at all for that one and there's the Lisa it's a good picture and that's what you use dial up for I mean back in you know when it first came out to get images and text and that was a big that was huge back then when it first came out you know when the internet first really started going in, in around 1994 1995 and I guess there's different pictures we can click on. Front view with front cover removed. Let's click on that. Yeah, and it's saying www.obsoletemuseum.org slash lisa slash opencov.jpg jpeg. And there comes a picture with the front open. And that didn't take very long at all. So my free Juno internet is getting back in gear, guys. So stay tuned. We're going to do more videos like this, just playing around with dial-up, seeing what we can do with dial-up today, and hopefully using older computers. I'd like to use a computer older than this HP when I get it working. Maybe this website will help me figure it out. Guys, you have a great day, and check us out next time on the Dial-Up Chronicles.